the Yama here. Uh, I haven't gone live in a bit here, so I can see that we're still starting. We'll get started in just a bit. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Niyama here. Um, this is going to be really quick. It's just something that has shown up enough times today that I, I feel I'll come out and make a Facebook Live. It's been a while since I've been out here on Facebook Live, so it's going to be really funny that of all the things, this is what brought me back out. Um, and what it is right now is that there's been something that's been bugging me every time I've gone on to Zoom today. Uh, and that thing is the the chime feature that they have on Zoom. And the reason it's been bugging me is that they changed it. Now, look, I am someone who loves change. I, change is actually something that excites me. And the, the part of it that really gets me here, the thing that's been bugging me about it is that uh, Zoom had a pretty distinct high pitch sound. Uh, for a very long time. It's like, din -in, just like the sound that was always there. And today, in every single call that I had, whenever someone joined the conversation, it was a more, more of like a, a doorbell. It's like a din din. And I heard it this morning for the first time and just was taken aback. Because even though I say I've heard it for the first time today, I've actually heard it, that same sound in its multiple variations for years on audio conference calls back when I was a consultant with everyone huddled around the same speakers to just like even the sound of a doorbell. Like for decades, there's this sound that's been going on and uh, there was this level of this pure disappointment that I felt when I heard that sound for the first time. And I was able to process it for a bit there, but the reason the reason for it, it's not because I like the other sound more. I would have been totally found, fine had it been uh, turned to lasers or to a foghorn or to any other two random notes. Like it's not, it's not, that wasn't the element of it, the fact that it changed. What got me was that it felt like it was moving back, becoming more palatable and becoming more traditional, uh, in a way that it didn't necessarily need to be. I think the the element that got me, the element that, that, that's been bugging me is as the platform, I've been on that platform for, I don't know now, five years, something like that. Uh, as the platform becomes more mainstream, uh, will, it, will it lose some of the qualities that made it good such that all the other mainstream uh, platforms that weren't Zoom uh, and basically Zoom's competitors, major competitors, uh, is, is it going to take on the features that didn't make those competitors successful in the first place? Because uh, otherwise, you know, these, these organizations, a lot of the larger organizations, multinational corporations had paid accounts with them and then still uh, the whole world decided to choose a completely different platform. And so right now that's that's playing for me. And I. I'm sharing this here. It it seems on some level like completely silly. I get it, um, but I also, I think the other part of it is that as a trailblazer myself, it's something that I think about a lot. It's something that thinks about like as my platform continues to grow, as the thought leadership gets out in the world. There's some things I'm doing right now that is it's massive. The podcast has taken off. We have a YouTube channel that continues to grow. There's there's uh, trailblazer tribe conversations. We're launching possibilities. 2045. We're getting some career conversations in, into the mix. And then we also just launched uh, the Trailblazer Collective, which is our paid ongoing uh, mastermind collective. And with all of that, there's a there's an element of being an outlier, being a pioneer, being a maverick, one of the first, one of the only, one of a kind. And there's a latent fear in the back of my mind of, well, as this continues to grow, Will I lose the essence of what made it awesome? I think that when I hear that sound on Zoom, like, you know, more power to them. I'm sure I'm sure they've, they've done all the, it's not about Zoom. <laughs> this is the thing here. Um, it just hits on, it hits on a fear of mine. Will I have to give up things to, will I have to give up what made it unique in order to uh, continue to grow and meet the asks of the mainstream? The answer in a lot of different ways is yes. And honestly, if it's if it's the simple sound of a chime as you enter or leave a room, 
or the equivalent of what that is for me, I'll be happy to to, to make that adjustment. Um, I'm just very real. I'm just recognizing how real the element of it being the gateway sound is to me. And in the reflection there, just I'm just capturing, catching myself just the, in the elements of just the the real acknowledgement of the potential fear of success and the potential fear of success being that as it continues as I continue to get more successful as the, the things that I do be, continue to make more of an impact in the world and we reach more and more people will that actually keep will that actually take me off of my mission off of my unique standings um, in a way that doesn't continue to serve all this from two sounds uh, when entering a room, uh, but I noticed the impact on me. It was it, it felt irrational until I spent some time saying, "Well, what if it made complete sense? What if it actually made complete sense? Because it's clearly evoking a sense out of me." So I'll end this uh, here, but I'll be curious for you. Uh, what is uh, as a trailblazer yourself? What's what's something that uh, let's just call that what what is something that lies in your realm uh, when it comes to any fears or any doubts or anything that's on your mind about becoming too successful, about having these things that you feel are unique ab about your vision be adopted in a mainstream way. And let's just open up a conversation about that. I'm sharing some of the things that was real for me. Um, I'd be curious what's real for you. All right. I'm the Amos Strong. Uh, if you're interested in, in actually engaging in a conversation with me in real time, I know that's like the best place for me to be. Uh, go to niyamashang.com slash tribe and sign up for an upcoming tribe conversation. Once a week, we get together uh, and we do some we do some real work together. So I'd love to be in a conversation with you. All right. You'll be seeing more of me. It is good to see you uh, here. I would love to be in conversation with you. Leave some comments. We'll come back and we'll, we'll continue from there. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey, Oniyama here. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet, and then go ahead and leave one of your insights from today's video in the comments below. If you're looking to take this deeper, you can go and watch another video, or you can go to niyama.com slash tribe to get exclusive invitation to our tribe member only events. I'll see you soon.